Hi, I'm Paul Tannehill, Lynn Benton Community College eLearning Systems Administrator, also known as the other Paul, as Paul Haygood likes to refer to me. He mentioned in his presentation that I'll be talking about Moodle blocks. I'll also be sharing with you in this presentation a little bit about Moodle themes. Moving into Paul's uh, Moodle course, the English 207 screencast that was in his presentation, I'm going to do a little bit about the font size. Not that I need to, I just want to. That's a little big. I'm going to go a little medium there and put some, put some width into the layout. There we go. Now, Paul mentioned in his presentation that on the left side of the content area, the content area being more or less in the, the middle wider block, on the left side is primarily the default layout uh, is more or less administrative in nature. And on the right side is more or less the, the blocks that he mentioned that I'll be covering here in a second. One of the good things about Moodle is, though, is that uh, you can move those back and forth. Um, as opposed to Blackboard, all of your navigation was always on the left side. Over here, you can put anything pretty much wherever you want. So Paul mentioned uh, in his presentation about uh, turning the editing on. It's just as easy as clicking this button here. And now the editing is on. As I scroll down below, you'll see where I can add a block. I just kind of uh, give a definition of blocks. It's uh, just just a uh, like a task specific, customizable uh, tool that you can that you can deploy anywhere within your course. One of the things that I think Paul mentioned also in his presentation was that uh, Moodle has everything laid out in, in one page. So you can scroll up and down, and you can you can turn the visibility on or off to kind of scrunch that up some. But the um, one of the aspects of blocks in Moodle is that the you can make them always visible no matter what page you or the student is on. Another thing with blocks is again you can move them, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Some of these existing blocks you'll see the little uh, left facing arrow to move it left, and you can move it up with the up arrow, and on the opposite side. If it's on the left, you can move it right. If it's on the right, you can, of course, move it left. Okay. Moving into the drop-down in the blocks add area here. I'm going to cover a number of these blocks here. Um, let's start off with the blog menu. I was at a workshop recently and, and overheard a quote. Someone said, the most transformational learning is through journaling. And Moodle sure makes it easy for you and the students to, to blog. And without going into what it represents within the Moodle context, uh, you can make a little interface, a little, little block for your students to real easily be able to add a new entry in their blog, to view their own entries and preferences, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to, for now, go ahead and delete this block so it doesn't clutter up our interface too much for this presentation. And it's gone. Going to add another block if you use maybe you utilize a calendar in your Moodle course, and the calendar is down here. Let me go ahead and move that up a few times and get it more closer to the top, more closer, get it closer to the top of the page so it's a little more immediately visible. As simple as these little editing arrows here. I think that's going to be a good spot for the calendar. Let me see what else I'm going to add here. Messages. Moodle makes it really easy to communicate among users from within the course. You can also see in a minute, I'll show you how a user can tell if there are other users online right at that moment. But I can check my messages just as easy as that. And I don't have any messages waiting, but if I did, I could click right there. And it would show me that I've got messages pending. And here's where I can go to look at my the other online users that are online right now at the moment. So there is a chat feature that we haven't decided whether we're going to turn on or off, but if we do, this might be a good way for students who happen to be studying at the same time to have a, a chat interface right there within the, uh, the, the course itself. Um, I was going to show you um, RSS feeds also. Oh, basically, um, before I do that, I'll show you a little bit of HTML here at the end of this, but 
You can have a quiz results block for your students as they take as they take their quizzes. Um, section links. You'll see in this in this course there are sections for 19 January through 25 January. You know, essentially week one, week two, week three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can have a section links block. I'll show you that real fast. And your students can, you might want to put this up near the top. I won't do that for this presentation, but your students can real quickly jump from section link to section link or um, units, however you want to label them. But w without having to scroll up and down and looking for the unit they need to go into, week one would be in the, in the week one link, week eight would be in the week eight link. Okay, let me show you just a little bit about uh, remote RSS feeds. If you don't know what RSS is, it stands for really simple syndication, but that still doesn't tell you too much. Uh, that's kind of outside the scope of what this little presentation is all about. But you can real quickly include an RSS feed. I'll show you how to include one uh, of a, like a news site, let's say. It says click here to configure this block to display RSS feeds. Like all things in Moodle, it kind of prompts you along for the next step without having to scratch your head and, and wonder where to go next. So I'll click here to configure it. There's already some uh, RSS feeds loaded in. If I didn't have one, I could uh, I could uh, just do a search up here. You see where I've been searching earlier for Moodle News RSS. You can you can search for RSS feeds and real quickly uh, plug those in. I'm gonna go ahead and get just a real quick news site here, and I'll just type in news, and I'm gonna change all these to yes. There we go. Let's see if it changes. You know, let's see where these come in here at the bottom again. So right off the bat, here's some here's some interesting news bits that come in that may or may not relate to your course. There may or may not be RSS feeds on CNN or other news sites or other RSS sites, and there are a couple of bajillion of them out there. But you might you might have some good luck in, in searching for RSS feeds that relate to the content of your course. And let me show you just a little bit about an HTML block that we can add here. You might want to have a uh, like a like a perpetual search link. Maybe you have a maybe you'd like your students to be able to real quickly access the latest videos on YouTube or on another video site relative to your course. I can go into this new HTML block, and this little icon right here means that I can configure it. I might just call this one uh, Moodle Videos. Let me go to my search page I've got prepared here real fast. And I'll just copy this URL. And I'm going to, why don't I say, uh, Select all that text, click on the insert web link icon, and paste that in there. I think I'm going to have it open in a new window, just the way I prefer it. And I'll click OK. My next one might be news stories relative to the course. It might be uh, a link to the library. It might be any other thing. And this is just one of many, many ways you can utilize an HTML block. Not You don't have to necessarily use it just for a list of links. There's any number of ways you can utilize this. For now, though, I'll just back off of this and have just one link in here, and I'll save the changes. So now let me pretend, uh, maybe go into more or less of a non-editing view here. And there's my RSS again. And there's some Moodle videos. So this again will take me to this search page. And if there's a recently added video, this will more or less be at the top of the list. I could click and I could have easy access to the latest uh, YouTube videos relative to my content. Kill that tab off. That's probably enough about uh, blocks right now. You see how easy, easy it is to add them again. You just make sure editing is turned on. And then down near the bottom, 
right, you'll see where you can add the blocks. Let me just real quick, um, let, let's, add, let's, let's put this RSS feed over to the left side just, just for fun. It's just, just as simple as that. Now, I believe it'll be like uh, Blackboard. Everything will just always come in on the bottom, and you need to move it up if you want to. There it is on the left. As easy as that. Okay. I mentioned also a little bit about uh, themes. Basically, the, uh, the interface change I did here at the beginning of this presentation is relative to the theme that this Moodle course is set in. Right now I have, I have our Moodle implementation set up so that the administrator and the instructors can choose, uh, I can choose like an overall theme for, for, the, uh, for the entire installation and instructors can choose individual themes for their individual courses. There's also a capability if we want to decide to let, even at the student level, to change their theme. So one student might sit next to another student might have totally different layouts and color combinations and themes for, for the same course that they're into. Um, that's, kind of, that's kind of up to, uh, up to decision right now. But uh, let me just show you how easy it is to change the overall look and feel of your course just in one fell swoop. You go down to, uh, there it is, settings. And by the way, this is where you can really easily change the name of your course, the, the short name or the, uh, the ID number. This is one thing right here that you cannot change. Once, once you create your uh, Blackboard course, once I create that for you, that can't be changed. So if you have, need a, a different number for your course, it'd be as easy as that. In Blackboard, that, that couldn't happen. But here's where you go to change your theme. And so right now we have this on if I put on do not force that would mean you can choose whatever theme you want I'm gonna make this this might be a, a, a familiar theme if you saw our Moodle implementation over uh, fall and winter term of 08 the metal theme it's coming up here there's a might be a familiar look for you let's go back into uh, settings though you see how everything is different the, the blocks are different everything's different And let's choose Dark Moodle is kind of a neat theme too. And it's a totally different layout. Well, the layout's the same. It's just the look and the feel and the flavor of, of the course is different. I think that's about it for now. You're probably getting your brain filled up right now. So feel free to call me, email me, email me if you need to. My, my extension number is 4647. Paul Tannehill at lynnbenton.edu. I'm in Will Lamont Hall 110, the media uh, services uh, department. <laughs> um, anyway, it's been a pleasure. Uh, look for more videos. Uh, take care. Happy moodling.